All right, we are on chapter eight, and this is level one, uh, page 492 of your text is where we're at. And what we're doing in this chapter is the zone has a new swimwear line that it's considering bringing to market. And so we are Richard Rayburn, who is the vice president of marketing, and we're gonna evaluate the profitability of this new swimwear line. And to do that, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to do a break-even analysis and some sensitivity analysis, okay? Break-even analysis uh, refers to the point at which our profits are zero, okay? That's where all of our revenues equal all of our expenses to create that product. So in other words, we have some fixed costs to create this product, um, some marketing costs and some manufacturing as well as some um, administrative costs that no matter how many we sell, even if we haven't sold a single swimsuit, those costs are still there, all right? Those are our fixed costs that we have to pay even if we have not sold a single swimsuit or even produced a single swimsuit, all right? And then we have some variable costs. And those variable costs are costs that um, will change as we produce swimsuits. There's a certain amount of variable cost per suit. Okay, so if you look over here, we have variable cost per unit. All right, so for every swimsuit that we manufacture, we're going to be um, spending $80.75 here um, per swimsuit, and that's our variable cost. All right, but then we also have these fixed costs here that we have to pay um, even before we've made a single suit. All right, so when those costs, when I add all of those up for the number of suits I'm selling, um, when those costs equal the amount of revenue I'm going to make when I sell my suits, um, that is when I break even, okay, when I've made zero profit, that um, I've covered all of my expenses but I haven't made any profit yet. That's my break even, and then the next suit I sell, now I'm making profit, okay? Sensitivity analysis has to do with how sensitive um, our analysis is to changes in our variables. So, such as how sensitive are um, my total costs, how sensitive is my costs to, um, to a change in my variable cost. How much will that affect my profits? How sensitive is that to that variable? Or how sensitive is my revenue to um, a change in selling price? Okay, how much will my overall revenue change if I lo raise or lower that selling price? All right, so um, those are the two things we're gonna uh, mainly look at in this section. And one of the things we're going to use to do that is a data table. Now, what a data table is, is it's just a table that takes um, all of our different output formulas, and we're going to change one of the inputs, and that table is going to show us how the results of those formulas change as that input changes. All right. And the easiest way to see it, I think, is just to go ahead and do it. So, uh, let's see. So we're on page 494, and we have this worksheet here that's going to help us evaluate the potential profitability of this product we've been talking about. Now, a couple things about data tables. Um, a data table has to be on the same worksheet as the data you're using to build it. Okay, I can't put it on a new worksheet. Um, it won't work, okay? Um, now, whenever you perform any sort of analysis, you're always starting with some sort of an assumption. Um, so over here, you'll see we've broken up into two uh, different areas. First, we have our assumption. And our assumption is because we haven't sold any yet, this is all just um, analysis, um, we're assuming that we can sell 3,000 of these, okay, and these are experts in our sales group have given us these numbers, okay, they think we can sell 3,000 of these new swimsuits if we sell them for about $130 a piece, okay? 
and our manufacturing costs for that are uh, going to be about $75 for each, and it's going to cost $5 to, uh, for distribution for each of these swimsuits. Okay? And the way that we're going to sell these 3,000 suits is because we're going to spend $75,000 on marketing. Okay? Well, we bought some new equipment and everything, so we already have a fixed cost of $52,000. Okay? And um, to sell, pay our salesmen and our administrative and everything, it's going to cost us about 18000 in order to sell these 3,000 suits, okay? So that, those are our assumptions that we're starting with. Now everything over here on the projection side, you'll notice that everything over here is just a typed in number, all right? No formulas. Over here, everything is based on these numbers, okay? So these are all formulas. My projections, or excuse me, my sales revenue is based on the number I'm selling and how much I'm selling it for, okay? And my variable costs then are based on how many I'm selling and the variable cost per unit. Same with my distribution cost, okay? It's the how many I'm selling and that variable cost per each of those units, all right? Then we add them up, we get all of our total variable costs and then our contribution margin, this is the amount of revenue that's left over after variable expenses. And it's called a contribution margin. And that's because this represents how much of our total revenue um, do we have to contribute towards our fixed costs. Okay, so we have about 150000 here of contribution margin revenue that can go towards fixed costs. Well, our total fixed costs are a little bit less, so if we're selling 3,000 suits, um, we're going to make $2,600 in profit, all right, after all of our expenses. Now for a brand new product line, 2,600 isn't bad, okay? But what if our sales projections are wrong? What if we can't sell 3,000 units. What if we only sell 1,500, okay? Well now, I have a loss of 71,000, okay? Now we could conduct some what-if analysis by continuing to change this number, or we can use a data table to conduct many analyses, um, and we'll be able to see a summary of those results on our worksheet, okay? So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and change. Now there are two different types of data tables, and for this we're going to use a one variable data table. Okay, so I'm just going to start with that. And with a one variable data table, we can change one input and uh, show multiple outputs values. Okay, so what I'm going to do in my first in my data table here is I'm going to vary the number of units that we sell, and I want to see how it affects my other numbers over here, my uh, projections. So to set up our data table, uh, we need to decide kind of on the structure of it. How is it, uh, what's it going to look like? Okay, so I'm going to list my inputs in, a, in the column side of my data table, and we're varying our inputs from 500 to 5,000 in increments of 500 units. So 500, 1,000, oops, yeah. Okay, and once you have a few of them in there, oopsies, my mouse, there we go. Ah, my mouse will work, there we go. Um, you can use your fill handle to copy down, it'll fill them in for you, all right? So these are going to be my inputs right here, and you can see I have my current input, which is 3,000. I'll change this back to what we had it, okay, in the middle here, and then I have other possibilities of how many units we could sell, all right, is basically what those are. Now I need to tell it what are the outputs that I want to see. Well, specifically, I want to see my sales revenue and I want to see my contribution margin.
and my profit. Okay. So right now, because I have a formula referring to these cells here, it's showing me the current values of those cells. All right. But these values could be confusing to some people. So what I want to do is add a custom format here to tell people what that um, output is. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and format sales. Okay, and this first one is my sales revenue. So I'm going to go down to custom format here and erase what's there. I'm going to say uh, sales revenue. Okay, and make sure you enclose that in quotation marks because that is what's telling Excel that. Um, you want those words to appear. All right, so you just type in what you want to say in quotation marks and hit OK. And we'll do the same thing with this one. Uh, format. Custom format. And this one is our contribution margin. All right, and say OK. And this one is our profit before taxes. Okay. There we go. All right. So now I have my input column. And when I click on these, you'll see the formula is still there. Okay, so now I have um, a cell that's referring to these cells, which are based on a formula. Okay, um, and Excel can use those to calculate the sales revenue here, and then it's going to show up each of those results for these numbers here. Well, the only thing I need to do now is I need to tell Excel which input cell are these referring to. Because if it's referring to my variable manufacturing cost, obviously I'm going to get different results over here than if it's referring to my sales and units. So now what I need to do is to tell Excel that what I'm doing here is creating a data table. All right, so I'm going to select the entire table, go up here to my data tab, and it's under what if analysis and I have data tables. Okay, I'm doing a one variable data table so I'm only going to be filling in one of these and my column input cell is what I want to use because my row input I don't have one. My row in this on this table is output cells. Okay, so I'm going to say column input cell is my sales and units which is this cell right here. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and Excel will calculate the data table for me. All right. So now let's do some formatting on this and then we'll talk about it a little bit. Uh, let's see, this is sales contribution and profit before taxes given varying Numbers of units sold. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and center and wrap that text. Okay, so now I have an expl explanation of what this table is doing so that if anyone else looks at this table, um, it'll make a little bit more sense. Okay, and I'm going to add commas. Um, I do not any decimal points, however, and then on this top row, I want dollar signs. Okay. So, what this table is telling me here is when I'm looking at it, and the main one I'm looking at here is my profit before taxes, and I can see that somewhere in here, between 2,500 and 3,000, is where my break-even point occurs. Okay, 
because at 2,500 I still have a loss, and then when I hit 3,000, I have a profit of uh, 2,600. Okay, so somewhere in there um, is where my profit equals my expenses, or excuse me, my profit, yes, profit, revenue equals expenses, and profit is zero, excuse me. <laughs> All right, so I could use a smaller increment over here um, to show the break-even point more precisely. But because I'm working with estimates projections, this range is going to be sufficient for me for now, okay? This table is also telling me a little bit about general profitability of this product. Um, say, because I'm, if I make it to 4,500 units sold, um, my revenue has increased significantly at that point, as well as my contribution margin, all right? And my profitability at that point is nearing 100,000, okay? So it's, it's giving me a general picture of how profitable this new product is. Now, data tables are very useful because um, if one of our assumptions over here changes, Excel will recalculate this table for us and update it. So say my manufacturing cost changed, um, and now it costs me $95 to produce each one of these swimsuits, okay? Um, if I do that, now I need to sell at least 5,000 of them. Um, somewhere between 4,500 and 5,000 is where I'm going to make profit, okay? So that shows me that this product is pretty significantly sensitive to this change in my manufacturing cost, okay? My profit is. Alright. Now, as a note, um, I'm going to go ahead and change this back. Um, if your data table doesn't update it, you can always go up to your formulas tab and you can hit this calculate now button. Um, F9 is the shortcut key for that. Um, or if you do want your um, data tables to update automatically, make sure that this is on automatic. Sometimes you don't want your data table to change unless you tell it to uh, because you want to keep those numbers for a certain reason, okay? And then you can change it to automatic except for data tables. And that means every time your worksheet recalculates, which is every time you enter something new into your worksheet, um, it will not update your data table. Otherwise, you can change it to manual, which means your worksheet will only update and recalculate um, when you tell it to. It won't ever do it automatically. I like to keep mine on automatic, um, I've never had, I have not had a reason in my work to uh, keep my data table, so I've never had to use that option, uh, but it's there just so you know, okay? So if you're having, if your data table isn't updating, go check these options, okay? You might have a different setting on there. Okay, so we just got told that, um, since this is a new product, it has to show at least 50000 in planned profit in the first year, otherwise the zone will cancel the line, all right? So one way to increase profit is to increase revenues. Um, so what we're going to do is develop a worksheet that shows the profitability effects of various interactions between our selling price and the number of units sold and the effect that that has on our profit. Okay, so in order to do that, um, in this case we need to vary two different things, which is our selling price and our number of units sold. And in order to have two inputs varying, I need to use a two-variable data table. Okay, now a two-variable data table can vary um, multiple inputs, but it can only show one output. All right, and so our output that we're gonna use is gonna be profit before taxes. Up here in our one variable data table, I have three different outputs, okay? Sales revenue, margin, and our profit. But this time I can only have one, okay? So we're gonna use profit before taxes. 
Okay. So our setup is similar to before. We're going to have our um, input cells in a column and then we're also going to have input cells across a row because in this case we're varying both. All right? So let's see, we're varying our units sold uh, the same way again from 500 to 5000 and increments of 500. Okay. And then across the top here, we're varying our selling price. Okay, and our selling price, the zone has a policy that our selling price always has to end with 95 cents. So we're going to do 19.95 and 129.95, 139.95. So we have, is that five different selling prices? Okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and label this here. Sales price. Okay. So now we have inputs up here and inputs down here. Now before you remember in our one variable data table, we had formulas up here. So where do we put the formula in a two variable data table? Well, in a two variable data table, you put it up here in the corner. Okay, so the formula cell we want to refer to is our profit before taxes. Okay, that's um, the formula cell we want to pull. Okay, and we definitely want to give that a custom number format. So I'm going to do custom. Okay. Now the reason I called it units sold is because that is then labeling this column here. Okay. And I have my sales price label for my row across here. And I'm ready to create my data table. All right. I've hidden my output formula underneath a custom number format, but it's still there. Notice it's still referring to this H19. All right. So now what we're going to do is similar to what we did before. We're going to select um, our data table range. Go up here to our data. It's under what if analysis and data table. And now we're going to have a row input cell and a column input cell. Well, our row input cell is our selling price. Okay, right here. And our column input is our, our um, unit sold, which is C8 right here. Go ahead and hit OK. All right. And it uses the formula here, it inputs them over here, and it does all of the calculations through here and gives me the output number that comes from my profit before taxes. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of style it. Okay, so what this table is telling me is that I'm making my break even, I'm breaking even again somewhere between 2,500 and 3,000 suits sold, depending on my selling price here. Um, but in order for me to get a profit of 50,000, I pretty much need to sell 4,000 suits at uh, $130. Okay, in order to make that profit that I need to make, all right? Now, I could price my suit at 150, and then I would make um, the required 50,000 by the time I sold 3,000 of them, like I was expecting up here, but Again, at that price, I don't know if I can sell 3,000. So um, it, that's what this table is doing. It's giving us an idea of what we'd have to change in order to hit that uh, profit margin that we need to get to. Okay? 
um, another way to increase profits is to reduce costs. So let's go up here and see what would happen if we were able to reduce this cost to $70, okay? Well, that brought our profits up quite a bit. Now we pretty much only, now at $3,000 we can sell them at $139 basically. Um, and only sell 3,000 of them, okay? So it, uh, it changed the number we need to sell and, the, and our selling price we could sell at uh, to reach that profit goal, okay? Um, so that's the level one lesson. One variable data tables and two variable data tables. Go ahead and complete the steps to success on page 511.